Welcome back guys. Now in this video, let's discuss about antepartum hemorrhages, a subtopic of antepartum hemorrhage that is placenta previa. Now what is the definition of antepartum hemorrhage? The definition is bleeding from the genital tract or bleeding into the genital tract after 28 weeks of period of gestation. That is after the period of viability if there is any hemorrhage till to the time of birth. So after 28 weeks till to the time of birth. If there is any hemorrhage into or from the genital tract that is known as antepartum hemorrhage. Now what are the causes of antepartum hemorrhage? The most important causes are abruptio placenta. Okay, the most common cause is abruptio placenta followed by placenta previa. Okay, that's the topic which we are going to discuss right now. Okay, so abruptio placenta, placenta previa, vasa previa, circumvalent placenta, circummarginate placenta, like you know because of some trauma, genital lacerations, genital polyps, all of them can cause or they can contribute to antepartum hemorrhage. Now, the very important point is out of all, the most common cause of antepartum hemorrhage is abruptio placenta or placental abruption. So, abruption is more frequent when compared to placenta previa. So, the incidence of abruptio placenta is 0.5 that is greater than placenta previa. Why? Because placenta previa incidence is only 0.3. Now, after this, Let's see what exactly is placenta previa. What's the problem with the placenta previa? Guys, this is a normal placenta, okay, where the placenta is properly localized in the uterus. For example, if you see in this uterus, the placenta is placed more in the lower uterine segment. The placenta comes down. So that is known as a placenta is present in the lower uterine segment. So what is the exact definition of a placenta previa? The exact definition of placenta previa is placenta lying partially or completely in the lower uterine segment. For example, in this image, the placenta is completely in the lower uterine segment, completely obstructing the baby's delivery. Okay, that's a very, like you know, a major degree of placenta. It's, a, it's completely closing the entire internal cervical os. Now, please take this point guys, the bleeding, whatever is there because of placenta previa, I will say you why the bleeding will be there. But whatever the bleeding, which is seen with the placenta previa, is called as inevitable bleeding or unavoidable bleeding. Why? If there is placenta previa means definitely there will be bleeding. Okay, so the bleeding is called as inevitable bleeding or unavoidable bleeding and like you know if you want to know where the exactly placenta is located. So placenta localization scan is done in third trimester. Okay, the bleeding is called as inevitable bleeding or unavoidable bleeding and if you want to know where exactly the placenta is, don't do placenta localization scan in first trimester or second trimester right? because the placenta keeps on changing its positions. So, do it in third trimester. Okay. Now, why it is called as inevitable bleeding or unavoidable bleeding that we will see in the later slides. Now, in this slide, let's see what are the risk factors. Okay. What are the risk factors of placenta previa? See, one of the most important risk factors are previous history of a C-section and Previous history of placenta previa, okay, previous history of C-section and previous history of placenta previa, they are the most important risk factors for getting again placenta previa, okay, for having placenta previa again, previous history of placenta previa or previous history of a C-section are very important risk factors. Along with that, multiparity is a risk factor, okay. Now, increase maternal age, heuratage, smoking, Succinctorate lobe or placenta bilobeta. See, this is a very important. Okay, this is uh, repeatedly asked MCQ. What is that? Succinctorate placenta or placenta bilobeta is a risk factor. Why? Why? Because having a succinctorate placenta means a big placenta lobe and a small accessory lobe. That is succinctorate. If I am talking about bilobeta, there are two. There are two equally sized lobes of the placenta. So, if there is such a placenta with a main lobe and small accessory lobe that is succinctorata. So, this small lobe of placenta might come down. 
or even in placenta bilobeta, one lobe of the placenta is in upper uterine segment and one lobe is coming down to the lower uterine segment. And this accessory lobe or this extra lobe might get involved itself in bleeding. Twin pregnancy or multiple pregnancy. Guys, if a female is having a twins or triplets, the amount of placenta, the size of placenta is going to be big. If it is a big size placenta, there are chances that some part of placenta, some amount of placenta will be coming down to the lower uterine segment. So at the end of the day, what are the important risk factors? See, there are many risk factors. What are the important risk factors? Important risk factors are previous history of C-section, previous history of placenta previa, succinctate placenta, placenta bilobeta and twin pregnancy or multiple pregnancy. Okay, these are the important risk factors. Also try to remember smoking is a risk factor, a curatage is a risk, risk factor, increased maternal age, multiparity, they are also considered as risk factors. Now after this, let's see some important characteristics of bleeding associated with placenta previa. See the bleeding whatever is there it is bright red in color okay the terminology is important why because if they are saying dark red in color okay the, whatever the bleeding is there it is a dark red color bleeding from the genital tract after 28 weeks which is associated with the history of fall that is abruptio placenta okay so dark red color bleeding should remind you abruption or placenta abruptio or abruptio placenta but if they are using the word bright red color bright red color should remind you the bleeding is going to be painless bleeding so the bleeding which is associated with or the bleeding because of placenta previa is painless bleeding and it is a causeless bleeding which means a female of for example 30 weeks of period of gestation she is going to come to the clinic and she will say that Doctor, simply I am bleeding. Okay, there is bleeding per vagina. There is no history of fall. There is no trauma to abdomen. And that bleeding also is painless and also causeless, which means it is not associated with any trauma. Okay, if they say there is bleeding per vagina, which is a dark red in color, painful bleeding associated with history of fall or trauma, that should remind you abruptio placenta here the bleeding is painless bleeding causeless bleeding bright pink color bleeding okay it's a bright red or pink color bleeding will be seen this is a recurrent bleeding why it is a recurrent bleeding we will discuss don't worry okay it's a recurrent bleeding now in the previous slide i have said to you that the bleeding which is seen with placenta previa is inevitable bleeding or unavoidable bleeding okay why why? Because first of all, let's see why there is antepartum hemorrhage seen with placenta previa. Guys, for example, if this is a uterus, okay, let me show uterus over here. For example, this is uterus. We all know that uterus is undergoing remodeling, especially in the lower uterine segment, okay? Especially in the lower uterine segment, uterus is undergoing remodeling. If Placenta comes to lower uterine segment because of the remodeling of the uterus. There can be chances of little bit amount of placental separation. Okay, see there is placenta which is present in the lower uterine segment. If lower uterine segment is expanding in size, such an expansion or such a remodeling can cause little bit distortment or little bit separation of the placenta. Such Little placental separation can cause bleeding. See, technically, is it placental separation which means abruptio placenta or not? Yes, technically speaking, it is abruptio placenta, but we shouldn't call it placental abruption. Okay, why? Because whatever the separation is there, it's very minimal. And the lower uterine segment, it's going to remodel. Lot of times it's going to increase in size, increase in size according to the growth of the baby in order to accommodate the baby the lower uterine segment is expansioning so whenever it expands because of little bit distortment there can be bleeding this is what given in the book see why it is inevitable bleeding with any degree of placenta previa okay it doesn't matter whatever the degree is 
what does i mean by see there are many degrees of placenta previa just wait we will discuss with any degree of placenta previa certain amount of spontaneous placental separation is inevitable okay some amount of placental separation will happen during lower uterine segment remodeling or at the time of cervical dilation so this causes bleeding okay and that bleeding is going to be inevitable why because cervical remo uh, uterine remodeling is happening lower uterine segment remodeling is happening cervical dilation will anyway happen if there is placenta in lower uterine segment that will separate little bit and causes the bleeding so that's the reason why it is called as inevitable bleeding or unavoidable bleeding now so what is the investigation of choice investigation of choice is the ultrasonography via vaginal route that is the transvaginal ultrasonography with such a small bleeding or little bleeding there won't be any problem to the baby most of the time so fetal heart sounds are usually present but abruptio placenta is more dangerous like you know condition when compared to placenta previa so in placental abruption there are chances that there will be fetal demise or fetal death okay now if you do the examination if you do if you try to do the palpation of the uterus the uterus is going to be soft and non tender which means no pain okay there is no pain on palpation of the uterus and the uterus is going to be equal to the period of gestation right? because there is live baby inside so it is equal to period of gestation there is no pain on palpation and the uterus is going to be soft and globular okay and this is known as warning hemorrhage why it is known as warning hemorrhage why because see if there is placenta previa many times bleeding will happen so for the first time if there is bleeding it's a warning that next time next time next time bleeding will happen so this is known as warning hemorrhage so simply if you want to remember warning hemorrhage is seen in placenta previa placenta previa the bleeding is recurrent bleeding causeless bleeding okay so there is no cause there is no association with the history of trauma and the bleeding is bright red in color let's see brownie's classification of placenta previa how many classifications are there there are four okay there are four degrees of placenta previa what are they see in type 1 the placenta is low lying but it is 2 cm okay it is within 2 cm from the internal cervical os okay this is the internal cervical os right so it is within within 2 cm from the internal cervical os which means it's very close to the internal cervical os in type 2 the placental margin is coming to the margins of the internal cervical os so that's why it's called as marginal placenta previa in marginal placenta previa the placenta is coming to the margins of the internal cervical os in type 3 the placenta is partially covering the internal cervical os which means half of the internal os is covered and half is open now in type 4 it is complete closure it's a complete closure of the internal cervical os so type 1 is low lying type 2 is marginal type 3 is partial and type 4 is complete placenta previa now these are types of placenta previa if they ask you which types of placenta previa are minor degree placenta previa which means not that bad not that dangerous which are considered as major degree placenta previa okay that we will see in this slide see type 1 and type 2 are usually considered as minor degree placenta previa type 3 and type 4 are little bit more risky placentas why because the internal cervical os is getting closed in type 4 complete closure in type 3 partial closure so type 3 and type 4 they are major degree placenta previas but important point is please concentrate here type 2 okay type 2 variant have again type 2 anterior and type 2 posterior so type 2 anterior type 2 anterior is considered as minor degree placenta previa type 2 posterior type 3 and type 4 these three are considered as major degree placenta previa okay type 2 posterior type 3 and type 4 they are considered as major degree placenta previa now you can ask me why 
type 2 posterior is more dangerous okay let me show you in this slide guys what you are seeing is placenta which is posterior see this is anterior side this is posterior side now just by looking at the image you have to tell me whether the placenta is posterior in position or anterior in position it is posterior in position okay and that too it is low lying placenta so placenta previa of which type see it is coming to the margins so it is a type 2 posterior so what is the problem with the type 2 posterior placenta type 2 posterior is known as a dangerous type of placenta previa okay it is considered as dangerous placenta previa why because by the time baby is like you know uh, getting engaged by the by the time baby is getting delivered if placenta is localized posteriorly the placenta might get compressed between baby's head and sacral bone so posteriorly there is the sacral bone and here is the baby's head so if placenta is localized posteriorly that causes compression of placenta so whenever the placental compression happens the blood supply to the baby gets compromised oxygen supply for the baby gets compromised and that may lead to fetal distress so type 2 posterior is considered as dangerous type and it is also a major degree placenta previa so please take this point guys here engagement of the fetal head will compress the placenta against the sacrum and it causes the fetal asphyxia or fetal distress okay this is a very very important now after this let's see what exactly is the stalworthy sign now stalworthy sign means for example if there is placenta previa okay now if you push the head of the baby okay if you push the head of the baby towards down okay if you push the head of the baby towards the cervix now where exactly is placenta placenta is in the lower uterine segment so pushing of the fetal head downwards decreases the fetal heart rate so slowing of fetal heart rate and pressing the head down into the pelvis if you push the head down into pelvis the fetal heart rate decreases so this is known as stalworthy sign and like you know why the fetal heart rate is getting decreased it's because of the placental compression okay so this sign is seen in placenta previa okay now after this please concentrate here placenta previa appears to be total before cervical dilation may become partial at 4 centimeter cervical dilation what they are trying to teach you see for example initially the placenta previa is complete for example okay initially there is type 4 placenta previa or complete placenta previa but by the moment cervical effacement and cervical dilation happens now the placenta will also move along with the cervix initially it looks like complete but with cervical effacement and cervical dilation a complete placenta previa might become partial so what they are trying to say you the placenta will change its position or the placenta previa type will change according to cervical dilation okay that's a very important point now after this please concentrate if you do digital examination okay you are just trying to do the digital examination with intact placenta previa okay there is placenta previa you just want to know whether the placenta have moved or not if it is completely moved out okay but what if there is complete placenta previa or partial placenta previa you are doing per vaginal examination so you are keeping your fingers into the vagina and your fingers are reaching the cervix so what happens your fingers might damage the placenta that causes very severe hemorrhage so very important point is per vaginal examination is a contraindicated in placenta previa or in any antipartum hemorrhage see there is antipartum hemorrhage we don't know whether it is placenta previa or abrupt show placenta immediately so if you do per vaginal examination if it is especially placenta previa that causes severe hemorrhage so what is that important point per vaginal examination is a contraindicated in antipartum hemorrhages or placenta previa now after this see this is the transvaginal ultrasonography where 
you can see okay this is the ultrasonographic view where you can see fetal head okay this is the fetal head this is the cervix okay this is the cervix so you can see an echogenic area okay this area so this area is nothing but the placenta and this placenta is almost partially covering the internal cervical as so this is type 3 placenta a placenta which is coming in the lower uterine segment and partially covering the internal cervical as okay this is how it looks now this is just for you to have more understanding now what is the management of placenta previa guys this slide is going to be very very important why because you can expect one mcq from here okay from the entire topic if they want to give an mcq they will give you from the management now there is placenta previa and this placenta previa is seen after 37 weeks okay placenta previa after 37 weeks if it is bleeding a 37 week female came to the clinic now she is having bleeding you have done your investigations it's clear that she is having placenta previa and now she is bleeding what to do now it's almost 37 weeks now she is in term do the c-section okay so bleeding placenta previa manage with c-section now after 37 weeks there is no bleeding you came to know that there is placenta previa okay after 37 weeks ultrasonography is clearly showing placenta previa but it is not bleeding right now it is not bleeding as of now it is not bleeding okay now for example if it is a type 1 placenta previa or type 2 anterior placenta previa see type 1 is minor degree right so normal vaginal delivery can be possible so in type 1 do normal vaginal delivery even in type 2 anterior which is a minor degree placenta previa you can do normal vaginal delivery if it is type 2 posterior that is a dangerous variety of placenta previa you have to go with the c-section why because if you allow normal vaginal delivery such a normal vaginal delivery will cause the compression of the placenta between the fetal head and the sacral bone now type 3 and type 4 they are considered as major degrees placenta previa but one important point is see if it is a type 3 type 3 means partial placenta previa the placenta is partially covering the internal cervical os. I have said you something with the cervical effacement and cervical dilation the placenta will move away. So you can expect that in this female right now there is type 3 placenta previa with cervical dilation the placenta may move away. If it moves away you can perform the normal vaginal delivery. If it is not moving away you have to do the c-section. So for type 3 placenta previa, what we are going to do is, we will do double setup examination. Okay, double setup, this is the exact question they will give you. Double setup examination is done for type 3 placenta previa, where we are actually trying for the normal vaginal delivery, expecting that placenta will move away. So, you are just like, you know, uh, let the cervical dilation happen and with your fingers, see whether the placenta have moved away or not. If it moves away, okay, well and good. Go with the normal vaginal delivery. See, the placenta is not moved away. Now, she starts to bleed. Why? Right? Because you have done your investigation like with your fingers. You have checked whether the placenta has moved away or not. It doesn't move away. Now, she starts to bleed. What do you have to do? Immediately, you have to go with the C-section. If placenta does not move away, there is the surgeon who is ready. Okay. To, he will give an incision directly and he will take out the baby so c-section will be done if it is type 4 placenta previa completely the cervical loss is completely closed so there is no chance that the baby will be coming out in a normal vaginal delivery so you have to go with the c-section okay so this is the management after 37 weeks if bleeding do c-section if it's not bleeding according to the type of placenta previa do the delivery now before 34 weeks now she is having bleeding okay before 34 weeks she is having bleeding now she came to the department now we have seen that placenta previa is seen on ultrasonography now she is bleeding what to do what to do means try to do
conservative management or try to do expectant management known as McAfee Johnson's regimen. So very very important the expectant management done for placenta previa is McAfee Johnson regimen. What exactly we are trying to do? We are doing conservation. As she is bleeding, whatever the amount of blood loss, try to replace it. So you have to do resuscitation by maintaining airway, breathing and circulation. Okay, and try to arrange for the blood. See these are all conservative things. Give steroids for the lung development. Now the baby is less than 34 weeks, right? So try to give the, not try to, you have to give the steroids for lung maturation. One important point I want to put into your mind is because of this resuscitative measures or conservative management, 90% of the time the bleeding will stop. Okay, 90% of the time bleeding will stop and you can continue the pregnancy. What I will be doing in the conservative management? I will be maintaining the airway, breathing and circulation. I will be arranging the blood. I will be giving steroids to the mother for lung development in the fetus. See, if there are any premature contractions, then I will be using tocolytics. Tocolytics are only indicated if they are needed. If there are any premature contractions, only then tocolytics are given otherwise tocolytics are not given and as a part of expectant management also i will be giving anti d antibodies that is 3000 micrograms okay rh negative mother if the mother is rh negative and the baby is rh positive i will be giving anti d antibodies also so this is expectant management and with expectant management 90 percent of the time bleeding will stop even after doing expectant management if bleeding doesn't stop She's bleeding. What to be done? Do the C-section. Okay, go with the C-section. Remove the baby or deliver the baby and give the steroids postnatally to the baby for the lung development. So, this is the management before 34 weeks. Okay, before 34 weeks, bleeding, go with the expectant management. If expectant management fails, go with the C-section. Okay, this is all about the management of placenta previa. After this, now please see this one question. If there is minor degree placenta previa, see usually minor degrees means type 1, type 2 anterior. If there is usually minor degree placenta previa means I will be going with the normal vaginal delivery. But minor degree placenta previa along with, along with any fetal distress, any signs of fetal distress or maternal comorbidities or mother is having, you know, having like a cardiovascular diseases or she is having uncontrollable hypertension in that conditions you have to go with the c-section usually minor degrees of placenta previa normal vaginal delivery but minor degree of placenta previa along with fetal or maternal comorbidities c-section should be done okay guys we have completed the topic of a placenta previa in the next video let's discuss about the abruptio placenta thank you